In this video, we're going to rank every ranged DPS from easy to hard in Mythic Plus. Now to do this, we're going to focus on skill floors, which represents the minimum amount of effort needed to start pushing higher keys. Now this is completely different than skill ceilings, which represents how much a spec can be min-maxed, which is a completely different topic than what we'll cover today. Before we start though, we have one huge disclaimer here. It's impossible for everyone to agree with these types of rankings. What's hard for me might be easy for you, which is totally fine here. But to be as objective as possible for the average player, we've based our rankings on three main criteria. First up is rotational complexity. If a spec has a lot of damage buttons, tons of buff maintenance, or needs precise timing, then it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Next, we need to think of how many jobs a spec needs to perform in any run. Lots of utility and mob control means higher expectations. And finally, passive durability will play a huge factor for our ranks. Now, we all know there's tons of one-shot mechanics in Mythic Plus, so being able to take a huge hit without investing a personal cooldown is a huge plus. Now, we're going to start at both extremes, first looking at what might be the hardest and easiest specs in Mythic Plus. On one extreme, we have Arcane Mage, which represents one of the most challenging specs to play in all of WoW. The Mage class itself can feel incredibly squishy in higher keys, where raw physical damage is just super punishing, but unlike Fire, which has a cheat death style Cauterize, or Frost having Cold Snap for double ice block, Arcane is the most limited mage spec defensively, which can make it a challenge for newer players with limited knowledge of dungeon mechanics. Now on top of all this, Arcane has a very bloated burst sequence with multiple disjointed cooldowns needing to be stacked in order to deal maximum damage, and depending on the build, could even include evocation or mana gem as part of burst sequences. Now what this means is that in order to play optimally with damage, Arcane Mages need to pre-plan around very precise burst windows, while also knowing how and when to microburst with minor CDs. While Mages might not have the most responsibilities, there is still a high expectation to participate in mob control, which sometimes can feel a bit jarring due to the limited range of Dragon's Breath. Now this makes positioning more challenging compared to other ranged classes who don't ever have the need to be near melee range. So, with a complicated rotation, weak passive defense, and a few unique responsibilities, Arcane Mages represent the more difficult side of range DPS. So, as a comparison, let's look at the other extreme with a beginner-friendly recommendation. Here we have BM Hunter, and while the Hunter class itself might not be the most meta, Beast Mastery is arguably one of the most accessible specs for any form of content. Now we get it, some people might already be typing that the Hunters are far too squishy, blah blah blah, which is something we acknowledged in our easy to hard melee video in our survival hunter section. And without much passive defense, Hunters do have to rely more on a few janky defensives to survive huge hits. And while this may seem like a massive obstacle, the saving grace is that BM is incredibly flexible with positioning, able to do its entire rotation while moving, which while at least on paper, should give it an easier time for actually avoiding mechanics compared to other ranged DPS. Now, speaking of the BM rotation, yes, there is some buff maintenance with Barbed Shot, but unlike Arcane Mage who needs to play around multiple disjointed CDs, bursting as a BM Hunter is one of the most straightforward decisions since Bestial Wrath is, more often than not, safe to press on cooldown, but also resettable with CDR. Lastly, BM Hunters aren't really expected to contribute as much as far as mob control is concerned, and even when they do, there isn't much difficulty since all of their control can be done while moving and from ranged. Now we've defined our two extremes, let's cover some remaining beginner-friendly ranged DPS. First up in the easier category is Balanced Druid. Now, this might come as a surprise since you might think that hybrids are a bit more complex but Boomkins managed to check all of our boxes as a beginner-friendly DPS. For one, the Balanced Druid damage rotation is quite intuitive, and although it might require some dot maintenance, both Moonfire and Sunfire can cleave, and can also be extended by Starfall, which makes it fairly straightforward for dealing huge damage on AoE pulls. Defensively, Balanced Druids are a mixed bag. 
While they lack good passive mitigation in Moonkin form, they are basically immortal in bear form. So as long as you know what mechanics are prone to one-shots, surviving big hits as a balanced druid is simply a matter of swapping forms. When it comes to mob control and utility, balanced druids have a decent amount of responsibilities, needing to position well for AoE stops and being ready to solar beam when needed, but this is not out of the ordinary when it comes to any ranged DPS. Now, with all of this in mind, we don't want to give you the impression that Boomkin is totally free to play, as there is a fair amount of depth involved with managing uptime on Rattle the Stars and playing around incarnation procs, but for the average player, Balanced Druid is a powerful and accessible DPS spec for pushing higher keys. Now, on a similar note, we've also recommended Destruction Warlock as a beginner-friendly DPS. Warlocks owe a lot of their accessibility to one key feature, that they're absolute tanks. Having high base stamina combined with multiple sources of passive damage reduction means that Warlocks are way less prone to getting one-shot compared to almost every other class in Mythic+. Plus. For beginners, this is a massive benefit since knowing what mechanics deal high damage is a huge learning curve that's difficult to climb without dying a few times in the process. Luckily, Warlocks can completely forego this struggle by simply not dying in situations where most other classes would. Destruction also picks up extra points when it comes to its damage rotation. With very little debuff maintenance and with a simple builder-spender system, doing high damage is quite intuitive. With plenty of room to min-max, using increased damage windows from Madness of Ajakir, which offers a few different ways to boost throughput in different situations. Even though Warlock might not be the most meta for high-level keys, Destruction is still a solid choice for beginners in Mythic Plus and, with future tuning, could even come back to be a dominant spec once again. But if Warlock isn't your thing, then Frost Mage might be your calling. Of all three mage specs, Frost is arguably the most accessible, due in part to the ease in dealing high AoE damage thanks to Frozen Orb, which can be reset in a few different ways after the rework in 10.15. These mechanics, combined with automatically cleaving single-target spells, means that Frost Mages should have no difficulty contributing on the meters during large pulls. And as we mentioned, the real challenge of Mage comes from its fragility, where every spec needs to be very proactive when it comes to survival. This means pre-using Alter Time to predict huge damage spikes, and being conscious of upcoming AoE damage in order to benefit from the newly added mass barrier. Okay, so wrapping up our beginner-friendly ranged DPS is Marksmanship Hunter. Again, to get the obvious out of the way here, yes, hunters as a whole can struggle with survivability as their weak passive defense makes one-shot mechanics far more threatening. But just like Beast Mastery, Marks makes up a ton of ground with its general lack of responsibilities when it comes to utility and even mob control, where the Hunter doesn't really have much to do outside of just damage. The main separation point between Marksmanship and BM comes down to mobility, where BM is slightly more flexible, while Marksmanship needs to be slightly more aware of positioning due to the casting time of aimed shot. Now that we've covered the most beginner-friendly ranged DPS, Let's dive into our remaining suggestions for intermediate level players. And here is where we're going to need to add some gradients. While it's easy to see the extremes of difficulty curves, we're going to need to make a similar distinction in the middle, balancing each spec between moderate and hard. So let's start on the moderate end with some intermediate level specs. Now at this point you might be wondering why we haven't mentioned Augmentation Evoker. After all, if you ask most players, they're going to probably tell you that augmentation is easy. And we completely understand where this is coming from, because rotationally, augmentation is pretty straightforward. Simply maximize the uptime on Eben Might by using charged spells and eruption and then Living Flame as a filler. Seems pretty straightforward. Well, the reason we aren't giving augmentation the easy label comes down to all the other jobs it can and should play in Mythic Plus where its wide range of utility spells and mob control options means that there's a lot of expectations that are placed on augmentation evokers. Above anything else, the true difficulty of the spec is game knowledge, knowing exactly when to time major abilities to play around your team's offensive and defensive cooldowns. Offensively, 
A good evoker needs to be constantly aware of their team's damage profiles, knowing exactly when to time Breath of Eons or simply even Ebon Might in order to match the damage cadence of their group. On the defensive end, Zephyr and Obsidian Scales are massively important for surviving repeated group-wide AoE damage. So if these abilities are misused or mistimed, then it can spell huge trouble. And it's important to remember that Augmentation has a wide array of mob control options, including multiple knock effects, a ranged interrupt, a targeted hard CC, an enraged dispel, and sometimes even an AoE stun. For lower keys, Augmentation can play more like a pure DPS, which means a lower skill floor. But pushing higher keys means making more out of the support role, adding more responsibilities and requiring more game awareness. Devastation Evoker falls in the moderate difficulty category for similar reasons to Augmentation, having a simple rotation but being noticeably squishier. Even though the toolkits between both specs include a lot of overlap, Devastation is more prone to flat-out dying due to lower versatility and HP combined with the absence of a cheat death mechanic. This means that Devastation Evokers need to be very proactive with their defensive toolkit and even need to take threat into consideration, being aware of their tank's aggro before committing any significant front-loaded burst. Overall, the two Evoker specs might seem easy on paper, but have enough unique responsibilities to make them more suitable for intermediate-level players who are already familiar with the nuances of Mythic Dungeons. Next up is Demonology Warlock. Here, most of the difficulty stems from the fact that the demo rotation requires a lot of precise timings in order to burst with either Tyrant or Nether Portal. Unlike other DPS specs, which can sometimes send their damage on demand, Demo requires a step-by-step -step ramp with tons of hard casting involved. This makes cooldown management incredibly unforgiving, as these small burst windows are the only times you deal real damage. The saving grace of playing Demo is how forgiving it is defensively. This is something we've already mentioned with Destro, but Warlocks are absolute tanks in Mythic Plus, and Demo is the tankiest spec of the three. So with a relatively even balance between offensive and defensive difficulty, and with some mob control responsibilities, we're putting Demo as a true moderately challenging spec. And finally, rounding out our moderate difficulty category is Fire Mage, which represents the sweet spot in terms of mage difficulty. Unlike Frost and Arcane, Fire has the distinct defensive advantage of a cheat death mechanic. Now this doesn't completely remove the defensive learning curve of the spec, after all, mages are still squishy without proactive defensive play, but having an anti-fail mechanic is a huge bonus for trying to learn a spec. The real difficulty of Fire Mage stems from the fact that it is APM intensive. As one of the few specs in WoW with a core rotational ability being off the global cooldown, playing Fire feels like Guitar Hero on Expert Mode, but with the added difficulty of needing to dodge mechanics. So while Fire Mage might be slightly more forgiving on the defensive end, its global intensive rotation is what sets it apart from Frost, but still puts it below Arcane in terms of overall difficulty. So now that we've covered every moderately difficult DPS, let's wrap things up with a few specs that can be a bit more challenging. First up in the harder difficulty is Shadow Priest. Now this can be contentious, as Shadow Priest has received multiple quality of life improvements over the past few years, and even more recently with its redesign in the 10.1.5 patch. Some people might consider Shadow Priest easy on the damage end because of mechanics like Shadow Crash and Misery, which make it easy to apply dots on AoE pulls. The true difficulty of Priest, though, lies within its defensive kit, where Shadow needs to play very proactive in order to survive one-shot mechanics. You can often see MDI-level Shadow Priest casting Flash Heal and pre-fading incoming damage in order to survive hits that Demo Warlocks could otherwise shrug off. So part of the challenge of playing Shadow is being very proactive with defensives since they're still on the squishier end of DPS. And if this wasn't enough, Shadow is actually quite intensive when it comes to mob control and utility this season, as Mass Dispel is one of the strongest Mythic Plus mechanics so careful positioning and general game awareness is needed to excel at this spec. 
So while Shadow might have an easy time putting out dots, it still has tons of smaller responsibilities that can make it less approachable compared to other ranged specs. Next up in the harder difficulty tier is Elemental Shaman. Now, just like Shadow Priest, one of the biggest difficulties when playing Shaman is limited passive defense, where Ellie relies exclusively on Astral Shift as a primary means of mitigation. So just like some of the other difficulty specs we've already mentioned, Elemental needs to be very proactive with defensive play. Rotationally, Ellie is a bit of a mixed bag here, having a relatively straightforward AoE damage rotation offset by a somewhat complicated single target sequence, which requires playing around Surge of Power and punishes any mindless button mashing. This means in order to deal optimal damage, Shamans need to sequence Earthshock and Ellie Blast into their rotation in order to avoid tanking their single target throughput. When it comes to mob control and utility, shamans as a whole have a bunch of different tasks. If you've watched our video on melee DPS, you already know that Enhance is stretched thin when it comes to responsibilities, having to perform multiple jobs while sticking to a bloated rotation. Ellie is more or less the same, but with slightly less mob control duties. Taken together, the spec is great for players who are already experienced in M+, and want to have more control during trash. Finally, we're putting Affliction in the harder difficulty category as one of the few true dot damage specs left in the game. Affliction requires paying attention to a ton of different things, multitasking to ensure optimal ramping and dot uptime. And generally speaking, DPS that rely more on maintenance debuffs can feel a bit overwhelming for beginner players since tracking dot timers can take attention away from other tasks. Again though, the saving grace of Warlock is the fact that it's generally tankier than most DPS, and without many utility tasks, it can focus purely on damage and mob control. And with that, we have our final rankings of every ranged DPS in the game, sorted by difficulty in Mythic Plus. Now, we should add as a disclaimer that these rankings might not be a perfect reflection of every key level. Some classes are more forgiving in lower keys, where damage isn't as punishing to misplays. Instead, our rankings represent a guide for the average player looking to play Mythic Plus consistently and grind keystones up to Keystone Master and beyond. Regardless of whether or not you're a beginner or a keystone grinder, we want to make Mythic Plus a better experience for everyone. Now, with that in mind, we want to know what topics you would like us to cover next. Drop a comment below and we might feature your idea in an upcoming video. And while you're doing that, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications so you can get instant access to our latest releases. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.